Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to build and decorate Leif's Loaves, this warm and cozy bakery for Riverton. So without any further ado, let's upgrade those hammers and start building. And as usual, we're going to start today's construction process by clearing out the inside of our sketching, which is basically just a 10 by 14 meter box with one corner snipped off and rearranged a little bit. And our foundation is just going to be made from 1 by 2 stone bricks. And I'm going to follow the inside of our core wood sketching. Except for the 2 by 2 meter box on the front, that's going to be a wooden stairway later. The frame art building, we're going to use ironwood poles. And the four in the back are going to be four meters high, and the two poles in the front are three meters high. And to get our ironwood to three meters, we're going to put down the two meter pole, switch to a one meter wooden pole, put it on the top as a temporary snap point, and then we'll place an ironwood pole into that, and then delete the wooden pole. And now we're left with a three meter tall wooden post. And for the main roof, we're going to use 45 degree iron beams. And at the peaks, we're going to utilize an X piece as a step point so we can get our roof to have a clean look at the top, deleting the X when we're done. And starting at the small roof, we'll give a 1 meter overhang on both sides and the front. And we'll make our eave out of 26 degree wooden beams. And our large roof will get a 1 meter overhang on just the two sides. After our eave caps are in place, we just fill the roof in with uh, 45 degree roof pieces. And then for the small roof, we we'll use 26 degree roof pieces. We'll do three rows of those. Except for the third row of shingles, we'll have that one phased into the others by one meter so we don't clip through the other roof. And then we'll start filling our floor in. Okay, now in the corner we have to add a 3 meter wooden post to support our walls. Go ahead and start our walls with the first course being 1 meter tall half walls. Now we'll finish filling in the floor for our second level. Now we'll go ahead and finish putting all our walls in using the 1 meter half wall so that we get nice even seam lines all the way around.
And here I left windows up in each eave out of habit, but I'll fill those in later because they're not really needed. After filling in the windows, we'll add a ceiling 5 meters from the floor using 2x2 flooring, leaving a 2x2 hole in the center for a hanging brazier. And then using half walls, we'll fill in the wall dividing the bakery from the living area. And now we'll add a rounded porch using 2 meter dark wood beams, rotating 2 clicks, and then add some stairs and flooring to it. Next add 1 meter poles in each corner as a temporary snap point, and then onto those we'll attach dark wood arches to each one. And to those we'll add 45 degree roof pieces, and free placing a roof cap in the center to fill the gap. And then we'll destroy the 1 meter poles and replace them with 4 meter dark wood poles. And then we'll finish off the exterior by adding dark wood trim pieces along the bottom of the foundation, in the corners, and wherever else it looks nice. Now we'll fill in the eaves using an X piece as a snapping point for the 26 degree beams and then add a ceiling 4 meters high using 2x2 flooring. And then we'll make everything look nice by adding trim work and building a box under the stairs. Next we'll build the entryway by adding some stairs and sides from half walls and a 26 degree roof cap with a 1 meter overhang in the front. Next we'll add a bay window into the center of the front wall. Start by adding 1 meter beams on each side at a 45 degree angle and connecting those with 1 meter beams. Add 2 meter poles to each corner and fill the top gap with beams. Next add the window sill by snapping a 1 by 1 floor to one of the overlapping beams on the window frame and then delete the bottom frame and replace with the overlap on the other side which will then allow you to snap the one by one flooring to that side and have the same on each side. And here we're just going to knock a hole in the wall and put our oven through it and on the outside we're going to make a decorative stand for it. And then over here in the living area, we're just going to add a few windows, including another bay window following the same process that we did earlier.
Now we'll add some cabinets, poking the front of the chest through a little bit to look like drawer pulls. And the top goes on in two layers. The first is even with the shutters, and the next one is pulled forward a little bit to create an overhang, and then you have to fill in the backspace between that and the walls. And then we'll build a cooler, 3 meters high from 1 by 1 walls, replacing the shelves so that they sit on the battens along the walls. And we'll finish this later. Now we'll add some shelves and a table for Leif to do his prep work on. In the living room we'll add some furniture, like a bed and a dresser that is built the same way as our cabinet. We'll build a frame from dark wood for a shoji screen, placing wood beams at the top for temporary backers. After the banners are placed, remove the backers and finish the frame with dark wood beams. After adding a table, a door, and some trim work, we'll build a hutch, which is basically just two dressers side by side with a shelf or two added to it. And we'll add a couple of banners to hide the stairway. And for the prep table we'll add a rolling pin by adding a couple of item stands with the arrows face each other and with a little space in between. And then go ahead and attach two wooden clubs and when they face together they appear like a rolling pin. And we'll add a bowl of cloudberries by placing down an item stand. And then we'll triple stack a couple, few item stands around that. Add some cloudberries and a bowl of serpent stew. Here we'll make a box of farm fresh eggs. Make the sides out of signs. The two ends vertical item stands. We'll put eight horizontal stands inside. And then we'll put some eggs in it. These ones happen to be Farmer Olaf's Farm Fresh Eggs. And 
We'll make a couple boxes at the top shelf. One for flour, one for salt. Then we'll add a jar and a few potions. All the glowy ones look nice. And here we'll add a tray with a pitcher and a knife. The knife needs three item stands stacked up instead of two. This window will place a couple of platters, one for bread and cupcakes on the other. Here we'll place a couple of pies cooling and maybe some glowy bottles. For our fridge, we'll place a froster in the top and close it off with signs and then add some pies and cupcakes underneath. And to make a door for our fridge, we'll start by free placing a 2 meter beam at the bottom and then attaching a 2 meter pole on each side. And a happy accident gave us two snap points to place our beams for the top of the door frame. And then we'll go ahead and fill it in with crystal when we're done. And now we can add some color to the rest of our bakery. And here we'll add a flower box made from vertical item stands and turnips with a few horizontal stands hidden inside for some magical mushrooms. A nightstand for a Care Bear nightlight. Some artwork by hanging some colorful tower shields and free placing poles and beams for a frame. And our table gets another flower box and maybe a tray for serving up a fresh pie. In the shelf we'll get some glowy bottles and a couple of family heirlooms. And down here we'll put some books with such classic titles as Baking Bad, Stop and Smell the Flower, Breads, Pastries and Pies, Oh My, Bake It So, by Jean-Luc. And a baker's guide to pinching the perfect loaf. We'll add another flower box here, but this one will replace two turnips with root masks. And we'll add a reading chair by free placing a few one by one walls around a dark wood chair and adding a floor lamp next to it. And on the outside we'll add a little bit more trim work along with a porch light. And we should have done this at the beginning but we'll add some flower beds now. You just can't place some flowers as close to the walls as I'd like. Then I'll add a border using one meter wooden posts, arranged and turned in random directions.
Of course, the best part of having a porch is having porch furniture so you can enjoy the nice weather and the views. And we can't have a bakery without our baker leaf. Now we can go ahead and add a railing in and close our porch a little bit. And add a porch light. And finally dress up our stairs and give it a railing. And for the landscaping, we'll just connect to the main pathway, clearing anything that's in the way and adding some decorative fencing too. And we'll start our street lamp in the usual way with two stone floor tiles side by side marking the center of one and adding a four meter pole. And I had a comment on my last video that suggested using doors for snap points instead of replacing a one by one block. So we'll snap a door to the edge of the second floor tile and then snap a second door to the edge of the first one at a 90 degree angle like this. And then this will allow us to snap a one by one block that is now perfectly centered into the first floor tile. And now we'll add a circling trophy to make it permanent lighting and our lamp post is finished. Now just to add some more fencing and fix the grass and our landscaping is done. Now let's head down the path to Leif's Loaves. I think our bakery turned out pretty nice. The rounded porch, multiple roof lines, and the dark wood trim adds a lot of visual interest to the outside of our building. The inside is warm and cozy with the living area having a nice comfy bed and privacy screen, a nice little dining area, and a place to sit and read all the cookbooks that are on our custom hutch. The bakery side has everything our village baker needs, an oven, a prep table, and a frosty display case. And our front door opens up to a nice little neck pond that is just begging for a gazebo, maybe in the next episode. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you won't miss any episodes in the future. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.